Hi, and welcome to Cascadeur. In this video, we're going to talk about the most fundamental things you need to know about Cascadeur and create this simple animation here. So let's get started. So, you've downloaded and installed Cascadeur, and the first thing you see is a startup window. You can access this window at any time by pressing the home icon. In the samples tab, you can find a set of scenes with characters and animations. Let's open this one for example. You can see the character from the scene displayed in the viewport. Now, let's take a closer look, shall we? To navigate the view, Hold ALT and left click to rotate the camera. Hold ALT and right click to zoom in and zoom out. Hold ALT and middle mouse button to move the camera. Remember that you can always change the controls and key bindings in the settings window, but for this tutorial I'm going to be using the standard layout. As a rule, scenes contain a lot of objects and rig elements. And if we choose to display all these objects all at once in the viewport, that'll make the scenes cluttered and difficult to work with. To avoid that, there's a set of display modes that you can choose from. Each mode displays and gives you access to a specific set of scene elements. In the view mode, for example, we can only see the character's mesh. So this view is very useful to check and play back your animation. But to start our work, we shall switch to auto-posing mode. The controllers for this mode look as a set of connected points. Now let's see how we can pose the character. Click the blue point at the character's foot. To move it, use Translate Manipulator. You can select it from the tool panel or simply press W. Select the axis and hold left mouse button to drag it along. Notice how much the whole pose has changed. If the pose resets every time you change it, that means the current frame doesn't have a key on it. So for now, just make sure to stay on frame 0. You can move objects along axes, planes, or relative to the viewport. Working with auto-posing is similar to making an AI prompt. Only you don't use words to form this prompt, you move the controllers. The controllers that form the prompt are called active and are displayed blue in the viewport. For example now, only the points of the feet are active. So autoposing only knows that one foot has to be placed here and the other one there. The position of the rest of the controllers is calculated automatically. Moving any points of the rig will automatically activate it and therefore include it into the prompt. Active points have an impact on the inactive ones. So now moving the hand also rotates the body. But once I activate the direction controller, the direction of the body will no longer change if I move the hand. You can activate more points and therefore specify your prompt. And of course you can select multiple points and move them simultaneously. Hold SHIFT to select the points that you want to include and click again to deselect them. Or you can left mouse click and drag a box to select the active points. You can double click any point to select all of its child nodes. Now when you move them, all of the points will be activated. You can easily rotate any number of points around any pivot. Select the points, select the rotation manipulator or press E on your keyboard. You can rotate the points along any axis of the manipulator and you can right click any point to make it a pivot. Also, you can switch between global and local modes of the manipulator. In the global mode, the axes of the manipulator correspond to those of the scene. It can be useful when you want to drag the foot along the floor, for example. And in the local mode, the axes follow the direction of the object. This mode is very handy, especially when you want to rotate the limbs. The more active controllers you set, the less freedom autoposing will have over the rig. To deactivate any of the controllers, select it and click this button here. Or press Shift Z on your keyboard. 
Once deactivated, auto-posing will assume the position of this controller depending on the rest of the active points. And this is the basis of what you need to know about the ways you can control the pose of the character. You can learn more about auto-posing from other videos on the channel, but now let's get to animating. So for now, you can either undo the changes by pressing Ctrl Z or open up a new scene. Animation pretty much consists of a sequence of poses on different frames. You can see all the frames of the animation on the timeline. The frames which contain poses that you set are called keyframes and are displayed blue on the timeline. Now, the only keyframe we have is on frame 0. Let's set the first pose for our animation on this frame. For our pose, we'll first need to activate the direction controller of the head to get the character to look forward. Now, let's move right foot forward and then adjust the rotation of the body using the direction controller of the chest. And that should be it for the starting pose of our animation. To make our next pose, we first have to create a new key. Go to frame 20 and click this button to create one, or simply press F. Now we need to change the pose in the new key. I suggest we just mirror it. To do that, double-click the pelvis point of the character to select all the points. Go to Mirror tool and select the mirror plane along which you want the mirroring to happen. Make sure that mirror pelvis position is turned off and click Mirror on current frame. Let's now make our animation return to our first pose in the end. Select the key on frame 0, hold Shift and middle mouse button and drag the key to frame 40. And now we have successfully copied the first key. Currently, there are no poses in between the frames, so the poses switch abruptly. Now, select all the frames of our animation. Left-click and drag a box along the timeline. Then, expand the Interpolations box and select Bezier Clamped. What we've done here is that we used Interpolation to calculate the poses in between the frames. However, let's make it so that the character would stand still for some time before changing the pose. To do that, go to frame 0 and copy that key to frame 10. This way, we created an interval between two identical poses, so our character would not move on that interval. Let's make another interval like that after the character changes the pose. To do that, simply copy frame 20 to frame 30. And now we have all the keys that we need for our animation. Click this button to limit the timeline to the animation range. And press play to watch it. Now let's use auto physics to make this animation much more exciting. Click the auto physics button to display the physics assistant. It shows you what your animation will look like once various physical algorithms are applied to it. These algorithms are displayed on the Physics Settings tab on the right. Currently, Physics Corrector is the only thing applied. The frames on which the feet are considered to be fulcrum, you can see their points outlined green in the viewport. Same goes for that interval on the timeline. However, on this interval, the feet move and are no longer considered as fulcrum. Such intervals, auto physics turns into jumps. You can change the animation timings, which will have an impact on the end result. For example, select the key on frame 10 and press plus on your keyboard to add more frames after it. The more frames there are between the keys, the longer this animation would take. And the longer the character has to stay airborne during the jump, the higher the jump will have to be. Same way you can remove the frames from the interval by pressing the minus key on your keyboard, and thus reduce the animation time. You can also change the timings by moving the keys along the timeline. To do that, select the key and hold the middle mouse button to drag it. Same as copying, but without holding shift. Now let's activate another physics filter, which is called Smooth Trajectory. 
turn it on first, and then you can use the slider to adjust its value. The higher the value, the smoother the trajectory and the velocity of the center of mass will be. On the lower values, the character appears to be rather stiff. On higher values, it squats and springs much more. By the way, you can disable Ghost Offset at any time to better see what Autophysics does to the animation. As for the smooth trajectory, let's keep its value at 90. Next, let's turn on Compensation Motion. This parameter controls the movements that can help the character keep balance. Same as when the person would swing their hands to try and prevent themselves from falling. Here, Compensation Motion makes the character slightly move their hands after the landing. I'll set the value to 95, just to make the animation appear more lively. And finally, let's add Secondary Motion. In most cases, Secondary Motion really makes animation come to life. I'll keep the value at 90 for this one as well. And now you can clearly see the overlaps in the character's arms. The only filter that's left is Smooth Rotation. However, it won't do much for this particular animation here. It's most useful when the character makes a quick and sharp turn. There, the filter helps to smooth the rotation, hence the name, and add additional movement to help the character initiate that rotation. Now, back to our scene, this animation is pretty much done. The only thing left to do is to apply the physics corrections to our character. To do that, simply click the Snap button. The pop-up window suggests that once Autophysics is applied, all the additional filters should be switched off and reset, to avoid unnecessary layering. So just click Yes. So the physics corrections have been applied and the intervals are now fixed. So the animation is now baked. Now we can switch to the View mode to watch our animation. After being snapped to Autophysics, all the frames of the animation became fixed, or in other words, baked. That means the interpolation intervals will no longer respond to any changes in the keyframes. So if you want to continue to work on this animation, you will want to keep the interpolation for the intervals. You can easily do that by clicking the Animation on Baking button here. You can see that multiple keyframes were added on the timeline to make sure the animation stays as close to the original as possible. And also, best interpolation methods have been chosen for the intervals automatically, which means the animation can now be edited again. But this animation is pretty much done, so now you can save it and export it. We really hope that this tutorial will help you get on board with Cascadeur. If you have any questions, do visit our Discord channel or leave a comment here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the latest updates. So until next time, cheers!